Uh, good morning. I see a couple good mornings. So good morning from Monica. Good morning, Francisco. Good morning, Raul. We have a couple of attendees joining us. Good morning, Jose. Good morning, Diana. And for everyone that is now officially joining us um, via Facebook, good morning to everyone and welcome to April's Chamber Cafecito. We are super excited to be here as well and uh, just uh, share a little bit of uh, some great opportunities to just speak on uh, the story of Francisco, a little bit of us, and just kind of get to know each other a little bit more today. So good morning and welcome. Buenos dias, everybody. My name is Michelle Leonard. I am the president and CEO of the San Benito County Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. We're super excited to bring Chamber Cafecito to Facebook and to um, our Zoom feed. So we're excited that everybody is able to join us. Um, one fun thing that's a little bit different this time is Eddie and I are both at the same place this time. Normally, we're in two different locations um, to keep with um, the progression of Chamber Cafecito, we would love for this to someday maybe be an in-person meeting in addition to virtual. So um, Eddie and I are sharing our cafecito together today. So we're just very excited to be with all of you today. Thank you for joining us. A huge thank you to Francisco Diaz, the Assistant County Clerk Recorder for San Benito County Elections Department. Um, we're so excited to get to know you better today and, and learn about all of your passions. So thank you so much for being here. Y muy buenos días a todos. Gracias por estar con nosotros en este día, este viernes por la mañana. Estamos muy contentos de compartir este espacio con ustedes por todos aquellos que nos están acompañando en uh, Facebook Live, en Zoom. Bienvenidos. Espero eh, estén listos y preparados para aprender todo lo que vamos a aprender de nuestro invitado especial, Francisco Díaz, de parte del, eh, del Departamento de Elecciones del Condado de San Benito. Así que estamos muy contentos de estar aquí con ellos. Nuevamente, bienvenidos. Mi nombre es Eduardo Navarro. Soy el director ejecutivo de la Fundación de la Cámara de Comercio aquí en el Condado de San Benito y creo que estamos listos para comenzar, así que comencemos. All right, so we want to take the first one and then we'll just kind of go from there. Yeah, Francisco, good morning. So we would love if you would just like tell us a little bit more about you. We did, you know, describe what you do, but if you could tell us more about your role and not a problem. Uh, do you want me to answer them in English or Spanish? <laughs> or Whichever you feel comfortable with. If you want to do a little bit of both, a mix of okay. English and Spanish and Spanglish, we're totally okay with that. I can make it confusing then. I'll start in English and then <laughs> end the sentence in Spanish. But I want to say good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here today. I really do appreciate it. I'm here in my office right now, so you might hear a lot of noise and people going back and forth. But I do have my coffee as well, so I want to make sure I point that out, you know, and then Yours. I'm not fully awake yet, but <laughs> <laughs> that I'm makes working it more fun. <laughs> okay, I'm working on it. So by the end of this, hopefully I will. Uh, well, let's get started then. So a little bit about myself. I'm the assistant county clerk recorder for the county of San Benito. I oversee uh, three divisions, the clerk recorder and the elections office. Essentially, the elections, we all know, it's the division that sends ballots out to everyone in the county. We recruit, we train, and make sure we have uh, qualified people to be able to run elections. The recorder is the one that does all the land titles. So if you buy, sell a house, you're going to come talk to us. And the clerk is the most, I think, the most fun department of all because we're the ones that are truly involved with our families in the community because we are the life cycles of your uh, the families. If you get married, you come to our office. When you have a child, you come and then we sell you your birth certificate. And those are really the three divisions and a little bit of what I do. I oversee the three offices. I hire, recruit, and train people to make sure that we provide good customer service. That's so awesome. So there's no escaping is yeah. what I'm hearing. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> One way or another, San Benito County, you will see Francisco Diaz. You will. <laughs> I'm so curious to like find out like how did you get into this role like did you know you wanted to do this and this be your career or was it something that you took a job and you just like ended up here like I'm just so curious to hear more about like how you got to this like really cool position. Well it's a little bit of both right uh, like a lot of young people when I was in college I didn't know what I was going to study and uh, there was one class that I kept exceeding at and that was politics and either because I like to talk a lot or because I like to debate. Either or. So I decided that I was going to be my career. And 
when I was in college, I worked in a lot of political campaigns. And there afterwards, I spent a couple of years working in the state of California, Wisconsin, Texas, Florida, uh, just doing campaigns in general. But at the end of the day, I was truly looking to establish some roots. And I was fortunate that San Benito County took a chance on me. And I've been working here for the last 10 years. And it's been a joy working here in the county of San Benito. And I think it's truly about the community that has made it uh, rewarding for me. Because the job, you can accomplish a job anywhere else, right? There's no difference between what I do in Monterey or Santa Cruz or Contra Costa. But working in this community, I think, is really the, the main difference. And that's really what's developed a passion for me, to be able to help people, be able to assist them, you know, be able to do weddings, be able to sell birth certificates, like I said. Uh, honestly, God, like, you're right. You, if you live in San Benito County, you're going to come into our office sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. E entonces, nos mencionaste un poquito de, de cómo llegaste ahí de, y mencionaste un poquito de tus pasiones, tus inspiraciones. Cuéntanos un poco más de tu familia, de un poco más de sobre, sobre ti. ¿Quién es Francisco Díaz? Aparte de, de trabajar con el condado, ¿quién es Francisco Díaz? Cuéntanos. Pues es una muy buena pregunta. Vamos a necesitar más tiempo, pero te voy a dar la versión <laughs> corta. Uh, yo yo me crie, nací, me crié en Watsonville. Y pues en el 2012 me cambié, me mudé aquí a, a San Benito County y ahorita en el momento vivo en San Juan Bautista. Pero yo vengo de una familia que es inmigrante, de, uh, originalmente de México. Yo nací aquí en Estados Unidos, pero frecuentemente viajo a, a México. Al momento no estoy casado, no tengo hijos, pero sí tengo muchos primos y nietos y familia con la que puedo convivir. Y se puede decir que tengo valores que son tradicionales, ¿verdad? Con muchas personas que son del origen de México, inmigrantes y también que son de la religión católica. Yo so, tengo valores de, tradicionales en que mm, dedico mucho tiempo a mi familia, le dedico mucho tiempo a mis amigos y a mis padres en, en, en primer lugar. Cada, cada domingo me la paso con mi papá, miramos partidos de fútbol y cada otro domingo vamos a misa juntos también. Wow, okay. that's, you know, your story is um, such a, well, first of all, it's so relatable, right? I think it's just the story of like the immigrant coming into a community, right? To to be accepted, to work hard, to dedicate time to their family, to dedicate time to their friends and still succeed, right? I think uh, I personally uh, identify very much with that story. Um, and it's just kind of inspiring to see someone at your level in your position and a position of leadership, right? But also being so representative and so in tune with the community. I think a lot of the times we want, we don't want to forget that, right? As we grow older into our careers and, you know, we just get bogged down by the day-to-day -day stuff the work you know that we have to do i think at the end of the day it's like our community our culture who we are that's really what defines us right and it's really almost like that grounding like foundational piece it's like you know at the end of the day do what i do the mistakes that i do the achievements that i might do like i want to be loyal to who i am internally right and i want to be grounded to that so i don't know it's just it's something that resonates with me um i'm sure michelle mm -hmm. you feel the same way um, it's just, it's so, I think, just inspiring to hear that from somebody else, right? Just to kind of how that almost validated. Yeah, for sure. I absolutely love your story. And I feel like you're so like committed to the work that you do. And it makes us feel really connected to not only the process, but the outcome of the process. So um, I really appreciate like your office and how everybody's really um, open and engaged with the community. Um, but I think just like you as a person, um, I think it's really awesome for us to get to know you as our community member and as our neighbor. So when you mentioned you live in San Juan, like what are your favorite things to do in San Juan and San Benito County? Like what is fun for you? What are your hobbies? Like where could we find you on a Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's thank you for bringing that. But I truly love San Juan Batista. Uh, when I was younger, I moved to the city like everyone else and says, hey, you know, I want to live in the city. So I lived in San Francisco, Oakland, and that wasn't for me. I like small towns. I like San Juan Batista. I like that I can walk down the street and everyone, you know, says hi to you. They stop and, you know, they just want to have a conversation. But on any given Saturday, you'll find me walking in downtown San Juan Batista. I'll be going to Doña Esther for my enchiladas. Uh, <laughs> I'll, <Hello. laughs> I'll be going and then, you know, I'll I know all the restaurants in San Juan Batista. So I'll be going also to Jardines just to enjoy a nice breakfast too. So I'm constantly going around town. 
And even in downtown Hollister, you know, we have a great uh, downtown where you can just walk, talk to people, go enjoy some coffees, whether it be a Calaveras, True Cafe. There's a lot of these places that you can sit down and just have a good conversation with people. Yeah, I, I think for us, we know, like, because we're always like promoting San Benito County with like our tourism efforts and our amazing business community. Like we always kind of know for us why we love San Benito County so much. But one of our favorite questions is, you know, because you mentioned you lived in like Oakland and bigger cities, like why San Benito County? Like what makes it so special? And why do you think it is that like neighbors say hi here and in, instead of other places? So that's a great question. I'm going to switch to Spanish. Uh, buena pregunta. Yo pienso que una de las cosas únicas y que tiene uh, San Benito, el condado de San Benito es que las personas aquí quieren vivir en un condado y en una ciudad que de veras sea civil, pero más importante que sea amig amigosa y que sea una amig amigosa, pues. Porque caminas en la calle y la gente te dice hola. Las personas quieren hablar contigo. Y en esta ciudad no tenemos mucho crimen, no tenemos problemas, porque todas las personas, si son trasplantes de la bahía o son nacidos en este condado, quieren mantener ese tipo de ambiente, ese tipo de amistad en este condado. Y yo pienso que eso es lo más importante que tenemos aquí y que queremos continuar. Uh, hace como dos meses estaba manejando de San Juan Batista a Hollister y miré como unas 40 personas limpiando las calles. Y eran puros voluntarios, personas que están donando su domingo o su sábado, y eso es lo que te hace sentir bien que hay personas que de veras quieren dar su tiempo para mejorar esta ciudad y que quieren ver algo mejor para ellos, para sus amigos y para sus hijos. That's awesome. Um, just kind of to reiterate what you were saying in English, right? The fact that you can, you know, go down, you know, 156 or whatever really, you know, kind of road or street in the county. And then on any given Saturday or Sunday, you'll see volunteers doing basically community service, whether it's a cleanup, um, whether it's volunteering somewhere else. I think that is the beauty of a community like this, that we are, you know, we're, we're a city, we're growing, and we're big enough to, you know, discover new things constantly about not only one another, our neighbors, our different industries and businesses, but we're also small enough that we can connect, that we can pull to the side of the road and be like, hey, can I jump in? Can I help? What is this, right? Like, and, and then just be deferred to all this, you know, different uh, organizations, community-based organizations, nonprofits, and just groups in general that are really interested in the well-being of the community. Creo que es una de las cosas eh, super interesantes de nuestra comunidad. Somos una comunidad que es muy, como, di como dijiste tú, muy amigable, calurosa, los unos a los otros. Creo que es algo muy importante también de guardar entre nosotros porque es lo que esencialmente necesitamos para hacer el cambio que queremos ver, ¿no? Este, creo que todos tenemos el mejor interés del condado, de la ciudad, ya sea Hallister, San Juan, eh, Paisines, pero queremos que todos estén contentos, que crezcan, que tengan oportunidades más que nada. Creo que aquí en la Cámara de Comercio, una de las cosas que está, es un valor fundamental para nosotros es el poder ver una comunidad que prospere, una comunidad que pueda seguir adelante, no, no, no nada más el día de hoy o no nada más este año, sino para las generaciones que están por venir, para nuestros hijos, para nuestros nietos, para la, la gente que está por venir, porque queremos ver una comunidad que sea equitativa para todos, que tenga oportunidades para todos y sobre todo que puedan sobresalir. I think that's just one of the beauties of just having amazing people interested in different things that we really want a community to, to be able to succeed. And, and again, not just for us now, but for the generations to come. So hearing that is really kind of just uh, like, yes, this is San Benito County. This is why we do live and breathe San Benito County very much so. I, I don't think there's anybody in the community that that I know that doesn't do anything outside of work. Like everybody volunteers somewhere, whether it's coaching, working for a nonprofit, um, mentoring somebody um, outside of work and outside of, you know, like your normal hobbies. Um, is there a, a way that you really like to give back? Is there, you know, like something that you do to participate as a, like an added value to be a community member? Yeah, um, and I totally agree with both of you. Everyone does really contribute a lot more than just their work or during the working hours in this community, which is, it's beautiful to be honest. 
Um, I do like to be of service to the community. So I do volunteer my time. Uh, any given weekend, you'll find me work uh, volunteering with the San Benito County Food Bank. I truly have a passion for being able to help other people distributing food. Right now, I'm also working with the nonprofit and we're building, actually constructing, literally constructing low-income housing so that we can help residents that can't afford regular price home be able to become homeowners, which is essentially one of the most important things you can do in the United States, become a homeowner. And that's one of my true passions as well. Uh, right now with the elections, I'm also being uh, introduced to a lot of different kinds of people and different uh, nonprofit groups. So it's given me an opportunity to expand my overall network and also my volunteering opportunities. So now I'm gonna be doing more work with the mission as well in, in San Juan Batista. Uh, I didn't know you could volunteer with them, whether it be cleaning the grounds, whether it be doing fundraisers, or just being able to mentor and help other people as well. So that's gonna be my new projects that I'm gonna be working on soon. That's awesome. I didn't know you could volunteer at the mission either. So that's really good for us to know and we can share that out too. So thank you for, for telling us that. Awesome. Una pregunta para ti. Hablamos un poco de, del Condado San Benito, de la comunidad, de los proyectos comunitarios y los beneficios, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Qué significa comunidad para ti? ¿Qué es comunidad? Tanto en el sentido literal como en el sentido metafórico, vamos a decirlo. ¿Qué significa para ti? Muy buena pregunta. So, para comunidad, para mí, yo pienso que significa el tener varias personas de la comunidad de diferentes caracteres, diferentes políticas, de diferentes uh, creencias religiosas que vienen juntos y son parte de un grupo y que tienen una misión, una visión y valores que son únicos, ¿verdad? Y en el condado de San Benito, somos una comunidad, tenemos una comunidad de personas y puede ser nuestros paisajes, los negocios, la, la razón que tenemos una, un área geográfica que nos separa a los demás tenemos a todos separados que crea una cultura aquí que es única también. Así como dije anteriormente, cuando uno camina en la calle, te dicen hola. Cuando vas a los restaurantes, miras a tus amigos, a tus familias, a gente que trabajas. Y en esta comunidad sí somos únicos. Todos nos queremos mucho, nos valoramos y nos ayudamos uno al otro. Puede ser por limpiar basura, donar comida, o puede ser como ustedes, ayudar a un negocio o a otros negocios pequeños, poder empezar y poder crecer para que sean miembros de esta comunidad. Para mí eso es lo que es ser comunidad. Such a holistic, right, kind of a vision of what a community is, right? It touches, I mean, and it's kind of a trick question, right? Like, what is community? Um, there is no wrong answer, uh, right or wrong answer. It's it's very, like, uh, almost like a very personal um, definition to us and, and what it really means. Because to a lot of us, it's, you know, it could be our family, our friends, but it could physically be our surroundings, right? Nuestros entornos. Um, and, and just kind of, uh, like, the things that almost define us and inspire us. So, like a follow up to that question, um, what is it that like inspires you or motivates you, um, or what's that passion uh, to 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 be involved in the community, to give back? ¿Qué es lo que te inspira o te motiva para estar en la comunidad, para participar y, y para involucrarte en, 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 en proyectos comunitarios? That's a great question. Um, I think really being able to be a service to others is something that I strongly believe. Uh, we all go to work, we all do, you know, have our lives or families and we do our passion and concern about them. But I think we also need to have empathy for other people as well. And we need to be able to volunteer at times. And everyone has different skills and assets. Um, I'm not really good at constructing building things. So I stay away from that. But if I can help someone like right now, I'm mentoring three young men and trying to help them develop their careers professionally, you know, trying to develop some good character traits for the future, then maybe I can be of service that way. And it kind of reminds me of what my dad used to say, you know, puedes trabajar todos los días, pero si no le das a tu, uh, tu prójimo, para que sirve el trabajo. So he was always a strong believer, like you gotta help other people because ultimately you give what you get back or vice versa, yeah. <laughs> you get what you get back. And just to translate, because I, I love that saying that should be quoted and put in a beautiful graphic. Um, you said, your dad said something in Spanish, and so in English it translates to, why work if you can't be of service to others, right? Um, and that really, 
you know, we always forget that like, it's basically the definition of philanthropy and giving back. But a lot of people think philanthropy and giving back is, is always monetary, um, but but it's not. And this is just an example, right? Like even, you know, you, you mentioned how it's so ingrained in, in your family, basically traditions and your values. And that's so true, right? Like all, like that's something that I resonate with 100%, um, also instilled by my parents that were always like, hey, you know, we're only, you know, we, we 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 need to work hard, obviously, but what good is it just working if it's always going to be for you, for you, for you, and never for everyone else, whether it's your family, your friends, or whatever, right? So it's just kind of like sense and culture of being able to just be, you know, available for everybody else, because if you're good with you, you want to be able to spread that, you know, um, whether it's, again, whether it's resources, monetary, but a lot of it is just time, right? Being, you know, having empathy for others and just kind of, um, you know, sharing space and community with them. I think it's super, super important. One of the questions that I was so curious about, just because every time I interact with you, you're so professional and like, you're so good at what you do. You're a great human. You're, you have such like a wonderful energy to be around. Uh, I'm blushing now. I'm blushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like for me, I, I always wonder like, when I see great leaders, like, do they have mentors that helped them get to this place? So when you you mentioned that you were mentoring um, three young men, and then you mentioned something about like your dad, you know, having these really profound, um, you know, sayings that really help mold you to you are like, in addition to your dad, did you have mentors that helped you? Um, did you have role models, whether they're, you know, somebody local that you talk to, or even, you know, like, um, a famous person in history? That, that's a great question. And I think it's extremely important for people to have mentors. Uh, growing up, I did have multiple mentors. I think at every stage of my life, there was people that you might look up to, you might see that they have character traits that you want to aspire to have. And I, I mean, if I just think back recently, in my professional career and the current position that I have, my current elected official, Joel Paul Gonzalez, has been a mentor for me. Because here's a man that's extremely accomplished, He's been, you know, 30 years in government, 20 years in private sector, and he's accomplished a lot of the things that I want to one day be able to realize. So he's been there. He's actually, you know, been there to be able to teach me, educate me, be able to provide me advice when I come to difficult situations. And he has a, a saying that's always the, what's the unintended consequence of your action? And that's something that he's always installed upon me. And it's every time I make a decision, I think about that. And every time I, you know, I get into a pickle or, you know, I need some advice. He's always been there to be able to listen to me and just provide some guidance. So I think it's extremely important for young people and not just young, anybody in general to have a role model. I mean, I don't consider myself that young anymore and I still have role models and I still seek role models because at every stage in life, you might need some advice, whether it be professional, career, uh, academically, or if you have a family with children or spouses, anything that you're going to life, I think it's important to have someone that can help you and guide you through the obstacles. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's we don't all have the knowledge, we don't all have the wisdom or experience, and there might be someone else. Yeah, I feel like we just found a new mentor. Thank you, Francisco. <laughs> You're being voluntold. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I feel like there's so much that we can learn just from how much of the community you interact with and really like seeing how much you're able to see like the the moments to celebrate in San Benito County. Mm -hmm. I think the busier you are like at work, that means more people are buying homes, more people are getting married, more people are having families. And I think that's super cool for San Benito County. And and even just to to see you progress in your career, that that tells me that San Benito County is, you know, a land of opportunities where we can all be really successful and grow in our career. And that makes me really excited to know that young people can you know like go to college locally or somewhere else and then like come back and then like establish a life and a, a great career path here so I'm really excited that we have this this cycle of um, growth and development not only professionally but personally so I, I'm really excited that we we have this opportunity to get to know you more because I feel like I understand you know like what you do for work but like as a person like I just really love to see how people can bring their genuine selves and that makes them as um, in their role just so connected to the community. And I think that's really, really important for us to be connected to this community. And I think that makes um, such a huge difference when we really interact and feel like a sense of connection. So 
you know, just thank you for that. I, I appreciate that. Awesome. No, I think it's, you know, to obviously, yes, to everything Michelle just said, <laughs> yes, to everything you're saying. I mean, it, no, but it's true. And honestly, um, you know, I, I've had the privilege of getting to know you as well uh, over the course of this year. And, and, and it's just been uh, so inspiring again to kind of just see other young Latinos, you know, that are really the change makers and change agents of this community. But not only, um, you know, like on a, not, not even in a, I don't even know how to say it. It's just like, you're so genuine and sincere about what you do that you don't even have to try, right? And that's the, like, the, the beauty, the, the, I don't know, just how to describe it. Even now I'm like, I'm speechless, right? But, it, but it's so, it, it's just something you feel, right? Um, you feel that kind of just genuinity and, uh, and, and just almost that drive to, that people just naturally gravitate towards you. So um, we were super excited when you accepted our invitation to join us today, just because it made sense, you know? Um, and obviously there's gonna be so, uh, you know, amazing great people and individuals and speakers that are gonna be joining us for the series, but um, we were particularly excited as well to have you there. And then, um, because we did work with you not too long ago um, for an event here in the community. So um, do you wanna maybe talk a little bit about the importance of just community and visibility, right? You, you don't have to talk about necessarily about the event itself, but just like what that meant to you to be able to pull something like that off, right? You know, you were there front and center, you know, you were running around as well. And it was, you know, talk, talk to us a little bit more about that experience. No, and thank you for, you know, you guys are just making me blush all, all this evening, this morning, but no, I really do want to, Thank you overall. I mean, the, what the Chamber of Commerce does is extremely important. And to be able to have a collaborative relationship like we have been able to establish is extremely important because that event that we were talking about was a border outreach and an introduction of new voting method that San Benito County is going to be applying. But if it wasn't because of our relationship, I don't think we would have been able to realize it because we all bring something to the table. We can all contribute but you guys have a lot of friendships, organizations, you know a lot of people. And then we were able to bring our friends and our network and together I think it, we realized it. So I would say, and I agree with you, that it's extremely important to build those relationships in the community. And you know, never discard anybody, never you know, think someone, you cannot be of help to someone because I think that's the number one fault that we a lot of us do. We can all be of service to each other. We can all network and we can all help out each other because Yes, a month ago it was our event, but next week it might be, you know, it might be some of the food banks event and we can all lend our help to that one. The month after that, it could be another organization. And I think we should all be supporting each other because we're all trying to accomplish something, which is to better serve the community, provide better customer service and probably help someone in need and whatever organization we're working on. Yeah, I, I think for me, one of my favorite parts about the event that we all did together was getting to reconnect with the community after kind of like a mandated like distance requirement mm -hmm. for so long because of the pandemic. So I know a lot of people maybe felt a little alone and isolated um, because of, you know, the pandemic, just that environment for a couple of years. So I feel like as we get to the other side of being, you know, um, um, less constricted by any type of like health requirements, that really seeing people gather and um, reconnect, I, I think that's so important for us. So for our departments to be able to, and organizations to be able to facilitate that, that was really special for us. So we definitely appreciate the opportunity to work together with your guys' department. But I think for us, like the bigger picture of not only that collaboration is the power we have together um, as a community. So, you know, like circling back to like the power of voting and the Voters' Choice Act, like to us, that really says that people have the ability to make change. Like we have that power in our hands. And I think that's why I, I really appreciate the work that you do is it empowers to people in people. It empowers people to have power and, and to share their voice and what they value by voting. And I think that's ultimately going to continue shaping the way San Benito County grows. And for us as you know, organizations that really support like not only businesses, but organizations and individual residents, like I think it's just super powerful for all of us to just continue doing good work together. So, you know, we just we definitely thank you for your continued collaboration. 
I mean, I thank you and thank you to both of you too, because it really it takes a lot of us, right, to make this work, to be able to have a successful community. And that's what we, I think the three of us and the rest of the community members really want. Yeah. Y creo que eh, no, nada más para recalcar un poco en español eh, de lo que estábamos hablando, eh, tuvimos la oportunidad de colaborar con con Francisco, su, su equipo y el Departamento de Elecciones para tener un, un evento comunitario que educó e informó al público general de nuevos métodos de votación, eh, cómo va a facilitar esos procesos para que todos se puedan, eh, puedan participar más a, a fondo en nuestro en nuestro proceso eh, de elecciones, ¿verdad? Pero más allá que eso, creo que lo que para nosotros fue súper importante uh, y, y realmente resaltó más fue la colaboración, eh, no nada más con, con tu equipo, pero también con el resto del condado, traer la comunidad que venían, tener toda la gente que participó, las organizaciones, eh, los negocios que participaron, realmente fue un, un esfuerzo eh, comunitario. Y creo que después de, de estar en la pandemia, de, de estar tanto tiempo alejados los unos a los otros, fue una oportunidad eh, esencial para poder compartir ese espacio, para poder salir, no, no nada más para tener un, un tiempo divertido y disfrutar, sino también para educarnos e informarnos mm -hmm. comunidad, como comunidad. Entonces creo que eso es eh, un... Un, este, un gran testimonio a, a, a lo que podemos hacer, a lo que está por venir y, y a las colaboraciones que, que, que están por llegar, ya sea mañana, el año que viene, el mes que viene, y, y estamos aquí para ello, estamos aquí para, para seguir trabajando duro, seguir trabajando juntos más que nada, y sabemos que, que, que todos unidos, eh, el pueblo jamás será vencido, como dice el dicho, ¿verdad? Eh, pero muchas gracias, Francisco, por todo. Uh, y a tu equipo y a todos aquellos que nos acompañaron. Eh, una pregunta, que hablamos mucho de la colaboración, de lo, que, de lo tan importante que es, ¿verdad? Eh, si tuvieras un mensaje eh, de empoderamiento, un mensaje para la generación del mañana, para los, los jóvenes, ¿qué sería tu mensaje? If you had a message for like tomorrow's generation, tomorrow's leaders, right? Um, what would that message of empowerment be? Uh, yo pienso que el mensaje que les di a las personas jóvenes o mayores o de mi edad fuera que es muy importante que uno sea de servicio para otras personas. Es muy importante. Sí es bueno realizar uno sus propios, uh, sus, sus sueños de uno, la, profesional, académicos, de familia, pero cuando uno es servicio a otra persona, uno de veras mejora el ambiente de uno y las vidas de otras personas. Y así como dijiste tú anteriormente, ser servicio no significa solamente donar dinero, pero significa también dar tiempo. Puedes hacer un cambio más grande en la comunidad si le donas tiempo a un niño, por ejemplo, de casa o algo así, o, te, o donas tu tiempo como ser un hermano mayor, porque eso de veras puede tener un impacto al presente, pero en los siguientes 30 años. Uh, las casas que estamos construyendo ahorita, por ejemplo, ese impacto no nomás es ahorita, pero para las personas, los niños que van a crecer en un hogar, las navidades, uh, que van a ir al colegio, ese va a ser el impacto que vamos a hacer. Por eso yo, ese fuera mi mensaje. Be of service and always help others. I love that. That's so important. And we, we definitely, definitely identify with um, being of service and helping others. So we thank you for your continued service and your support and, you know, for spending time with us today. This is one of our, our favorite things where it's, it's mm -hmm. informal, but it, you know, it gives us an opportunity to go you know, deeper into getting to know our community members, because I think that's what makes San Benito County such a great place to live and work, is the people within it and the things that we do and how diverse we are and how we all work really hard to feel like in an inclusive community, um, really celebrating all of our, our unique uh, differences. So, you know, a big thank you for spending time with us and Just, we're, we're so excited. We're, we're excited <laughs> thank, we're thank you. to be in your universe. No, thank you guys. I mean, this has been fun. So, you know, I really enjoy this and it's a great conversation. And, you know, if I could ever, ever help you and if I could ever be a service, just, you know, my door's always open. My, my phone, you can always call me and email me and I'm here to help out anybody. Yeah. 
Thank you. No, we appreciate you for taking some time uh, to, to be here with us. Um, it's just been very empowering. And honestly, um, there's a couple of big kind of themes and messages that I heard like that are overarching throughout this conversation. And a lot of it was community for sure. Um, and also empowerment, right? Um, and then just being of service to others. And I think like even now as we have, you know, so many events coming down the pipeline, right? We have our scholarship awards night. Um, we have our Pathways Empowerment program you know just empowering these young leaders and just kind of hearing you say that it's like oh my gosh like people are already doing this in the community you know it's like they don't have to be a part of the chamber or a part of our program or they you know they have to be working here physically to not be part of the change of the movement of the initiative right a lot of the one of the personal philosophies i think um just to kind of close out is it's really you know that what we do isn't just a program it's really kind of a movement it's an initiative that we want to instill in everybody else even when we are doing fundraisers i never say you know donate i always say invest because you're not donating it's not um you know a, a write-off necessarily it's an investment to the community to the individual um as someone who came from again very immigrant you know kind of background my father to this day uh just works you know in the fields um very hardworking man, uh, you know, financially going to college for me was a very difficult, right? It was a very difficult decision. Um, but the generosity that San Benito County gave me personally uh, was just crazy. It was, you know, out of this world. So I always say that investment that was done in me and in so many others to be able to come back here is just what really keeps us grounded, what really keeps us motivated to continue doing the work that we do. Um, and, and again, we don't see a lot of the times the impact right away, it's generational. You know, it could be tomorrow, it could be next year, it could be the, you know, the next decade. And, and that's, you know, what we're all about. So again, thank you for just kind of sharing that space with us and, you know, and just um, partaking in this, you know, conversation and getting to know you a little bit more. Thank you, and I appreciate it being here too as well. And then uh, I think I'm fully awake now. <laughs> that was the main goal of this whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> to just get all caffeinated so that we can keep through your Friday. <laughs> there we go. Mission accomplished. Entonces, muchas gracias a todos aquellos que nos han acompañado el día de hoy, uh, por todos aquellos que nos están viendo a través Zoom, a través Facebook, a uh, un recordatorio que también vamos a subir el video ya después, un poquito después, a nuestra página de internet. Um, y también este va a estar disponible en YouTube y lo vamos a recompartir otra vez en las redes sociales. Así que tendrán acceso a compartirlo, difundirlo con sus amigos, su familia. Para todos aquellos que no pudieron estar con nosotros esta mañana, no se preocupen, eh, tendrán la oportunidad. Y nuevamente, gracias Francisco Díaz del Departamento de Elecciones. Um, gracias Michelle por estar aquí. Eh, y... Bueno, estamos super contentos. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today and we hope to see everybody uh, for next month's uh, episode of Chamber Cafecito. It will be May. We have a lot of great things coming for you. So I hope everyone, you know, is able to tune in. And like I said, as a reminder, we have everything um, that is gonna be uploaded to our website, our YouTube channels. It's gonna get re-uploaded to our social media. So there is no excuse uh, to not uh, watch Chamber Cafecito. So you'll be able to, um, for everybody that wasn't able to join us today via Zoom or Facebook Live, um, we'll be able to reshare this, uh, you know, recording with everybody else. So thank you. Francisco, thank you again. We appreciate you. Have a great Friday. Uh, we hope it's smooth so you can just slide into the weekend to do some amazing things locally in our beautiful San Livino County. Again, thank you. And thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. And uh, let me know when you post that because I know my mom's going to want to see this. <laughs> today. We'll have it to you today. Okay. Okay, well, thank you again. Have a great Friday, and we will see everybody very soon. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.